Welcome to Dialed In RC. I'm your host, the RC Guru. Today we are here on Upfront and Close with the RC Guru visiting a dear friend of mine, Mr. Steve Geis. And Steve Geis is the guy who took everything over there at Motorama 2012. It's a pleasure to be here in your home. Steve, how are you today? Hey, this is great. I'm glad it's all coming together. It's yeah, great. yeah, it's been a while, right? Yeah. Since I last saw you, man, you know, <laughs> over there at the Mushroom Bowl, just right. messing around. You go to a major event like Motorama, and I'm, I'm sure you've been there before. What was it, last year? Absolutely. Last year was the uh, First time I, uh, well, actually, two years ago, uh, a good friend of mine, Daryl Lee, introduced me, got me back into our scene, lent me a vehicle, and drug me up there and said, just come up here and have some fun. And it opened my eyes to what's out there, outside of our little area, and showed me this was the first traveled race I ever went to. And we fought problems all, all that weekend with, you know, some old material, his old truck, but and he stuck by me. and. Uh, yeah, I ended up coming up through the whole ranks on my very first time out at another track and uh, got me hooked. And then the next year came back, finished second right behind all the top guys again. And this year I finally put it together. Three years consecutively, this is the real. This was the real deal this year, though. So the first year that you went, it was kind of like a struggle. You um, did you make the A main that first year? I, I did not. I I bumped from I think the E because I had I was a, they were running nitro at the time. And I ran, and uh, the motor was a little tired, and we didn't know, and we were fighting tuning problems. I missed all my heats, only got to run the mains, didn't have any practice on the track, and drove the entire time and continuously bumped up and ran all the way up to, I think, either the C or the B out of the bottom of the very back of the biggest nitro event. Wow. And it, I don't even run nitro. I run electric. Wow. It was just an experience to get out there. What and kind of nitro car were you It was an A-scale truggy. Never wow. even dro never even drove it. I assembled it, went over it, and it went up there and put it together and had a tired motor. And that's when Daryl really started. You know, he's like, "This is something we could do here." So, right, right. He you started. Know, and he's been pushing me ever since, and that's kind of it was kind of a fun experience. So that was the first year. The second year, you come back to Motorama. Yeah, come back. You there. notice it's getting bigger now. Absolutely. And at the time, uh, Short Course was just kind of getting up and rolling, and they were on the small clay track. And uh, I ran my 17.5 truck in both the mod and the 17.5. And I didn't even switch motors, and I ended up finishing second in the mod class with a 17.5 motor. And uh, wow. you know, I did well. I uh, ended up second, right behind one of the top drivers in 17.5. You know, at that time it was one of the biggest classes there. Um, but now, since then, everybody's going strictly mod uh, due to there's so much, you know, cost involved with trying to keep up with a 17.5 peak motor. You can do it a lot less expensive. But, wow. So the, you can see by the entries, I ch I was following the, the biggest classes. That's what I was looking for, just to you know challenge myself and you know my buddies that are there. So and that's what that's what the four wheel drive class was this year. Uh, I believe there was a maybe E or a G. May it was way down there. There were so many. There was a I think over just in the two four wheel drive class. It was by far the biggest class there, let alone the mm -hmm. other heats that I ran. So now, that's the second year that you were there. We're going to get right into mm -hmm. this year, which is 2012, and right. your experience there, where you came away with the number one trophy, yeah. which is uh, right back there, the uh, Motorama right there. What's that? The four-wheel the four drive yeah. modified short course truck. Hey, interesting, interesting trophy. I Absolutely. mean, you know, when you look at it, it's, it's like one of a kind. It's kind of a, a you know, it's got a mountain you're climbing, but it's a, it's a little, it's a little different. You know, it's it's a good one to have. Mm -hmm. ERC Guru. Today, I'm here with Mr. Steve Geis, who is the short course truck four wheel drive modified champion of Motorama 2012. A awesome feat where there was over 600 vehicles and drivers registered. So you you at Motorama, mm -hmm. yeah, it's your third year mm -hmm. coming to Motorama. 
actually third year back into RC. I went, Motorama was my introdu introduction back to RC. I raced one other on-road race and then my, I was hooked again and that was my third, that was my introduction to RC back to modern day terms, you know? Wow. I mean, so it was, I started right out with the big thing and it was, uh, that got me hooked to show me what can be done in RC and how many people are still interested in so RC. We're sitting here with a gentleman. We're sitting here with a gentleman who just decided on a humbug after going to a local radio control race facility and someone loaning him a vehicle saying, hey, would you like to race? And he like, yeah, yeah, I'll try it. And he gets involved in it. Two years later, he has the number one trophy to one of the major race events that one of the hugest draws uh, competitor-wise on the East Coast and the kid wins it. An incredible, an incredible story. That's why we have called him and, and sought to interview him because it's a phenomenal story. Most of the time radio controlled drivers like yourself have you know invested many of years and effort countless nights and days you know with the split fingers and all that from absolutely tools. still do it myself but yeah. you know but it was a it was a, a quick quick uh, introduction you know it was pushed in right into it and that I think is what made me so interested because I could see how much um, is going on in the, in the sport you know you're sheltered in a little world sometimes and it's good to get out there and see what's going on in the big picture of things and that was yeah. a, that was the biggest yeah. picture I've seen and I was, I was blown away by the whole experience so you know? now when you won that title I heard that there were a few manufacturers that approached you wanted you to get in photographs uh, I saw you you on uh, redrc.net uh, you're sitting up there with the TLR team, you Absolutely. know, Team Losey Racing Team, Factory Guys. You, they asked you to just come on in. What, 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 what did? They, how did they approach you when they did that? It was, it was a uh, surreal feeling because you know, not only was I so happy and just kind of, it was such a long weekend and so much effort put into the whole event. And after the win, you know, I was just taking it all in, just trying to, you know, calm myself and just not run around yelling and screaming but it was it was just calming myself and there's people coming up thanking me and you know just go man that just trust me go with them those are the guys you know I was so overwhelmed with what was going on my friends were great they calmed me down and said just go over there talk to them and uh whenever I took a picture and they put me right in the center you know they were very uh very decent guys you know um you know Matt Chambers was one I was racing with right on the track you know and he was uh you know, very polite and, you know, thanked me and they all wanted to check out what I did to my truck and we were asking information and they were a little shocked that I was running a bone stock vehicle and I couldn't tell you the last time I had done some service because this vehicle was always my rock. And they, they kind of, I don't know if they liked that answer or not, but right, it was right, the truth. Right. I told them that, you know, hey, right. I was running three classes. You whipped uh, with a vehicle that you didn't even like put no extra aftermarket parts on. It was a bone stock vehicle. Um, uh, I, did run, I did run some aftermarket tires and I do have, you know, it, the kit, the Team Losi kit does not come with any electronics, so you have to install that. But stock chassis, stock everything, these guys are running full blown vehicles and, you know, you know, the other Team Losi drivers, they were like, well, we're going to do a little experiment and see what's going on here because they were very interested in the idea and I was willing to tell them everything that I did to it and the little stuff that I did, but nothing real major and uh, I think they were pretty impressed with that. You know, they made a mention of that on their website. So, yeah. you know, I hope that helps people, you know, get a good product, you know, and like I said, there's lots of good companies out there, but I was... Things work that day. You know? Well, you know what? It's a good thing uh, when a company uh, I did, I did puts out a product, tires, right? And, have, and know, then when the they're, most of the time, when their team drivers come and compete so in an event, that. 
they're competing Stop with nuances on the vehicle that the local you know, guy like you you couldn't you get even if you wanted to get and so it, it's sort of at you're at a disadvantage when you're up against those sort of guys so I guess when they discovered that you had a bone stock truck you know, with just right, some fine tunings and a little bit of tweaking, you know, personal, yeah. you know, tweaking you know, on it. It, it, you know, it really like awakened their of, eyes to the fact that, that if a guy like who that, is well, you know what, it's a good thing. Unknown <laughs> company can come <laughs> on the scene, a major, and I can understand. But you know, I did my very best to to make sure you know try to stay humble because it's you know it's a whole collaboration. I'm sure there was a lot of guys there the vehicle, with that many competitors that, that could have had a tough like weekend you, and it could have been anybody else I feel but I did the best so driving and I kept it's myself it's calm it's the number one thing you know guys tend to get worked up and sort of guys so I guess when they discovered that you had a bone stock truck with right. just some fine tunings and a little bit of tweaking personal mm -hmm. yeah. you know tweaking on it it, it, it really awakened their eyes to the fact that if a guy who is unknown <laughs> can come on the scene, a major scene, with all the pressures and all of the hype, mm -hmm. all of the sponsors and all their best drivers, and take home the title, and then when they want to look at your vehicle, they discover that it's nothing special. Like, you beat them with nothing Special, right? That's kind of like a hard pill to swallow, right? And uh, I could understand. Mm -hmm. But you know, I did my very best to uh, to make sure you know try to stay humble because it's you know it's a whole collaboration. I'm sure there was a lot of guys there with that many competitors that could have had a tough weekend, and it could have been anybody else. I feel, but I did the best driving, and I kept myself calm. Was the number one thing. You know, t guys tend to get worked up at a, that much pressure in a race scenario and I'm I was you know I was talking to the guys on the stand and, I, and they kind of thought I was teasing them but I was truly humbled just to be on the A main driver stand with the guys I was just kind of at odd that I'm up there you know and I was telling them and they're like oh who's this guy he's probably just you know messing with us right but I was truthfully humbled that I, I was just up there racing with those guys and I was joking with one of the guys next to me I'm like man I, I'm serious and he's like ah oh, stop it you know just stop joking and then he's like, well, where are you qualified? I'm like, oh, I was tenth of a second off a of TQ, and I'm sitting right there. And he's like, oh, you know. And it kind of opened his eyes a little bit, but it, it was all in good, you know, good nature. He wasn't upset, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Enjoy RC racing. Radio control is the way to go. Booyah.